Okay, so we're going to start with episode one. See, why would we start with any other episode? Now, the first bit of information that I found was neat, uh, and I figured it would make it actually a pretty good first episode for this, was on Cybertron.com. They had articles about how the Titans Return Wave 4 is starting to show up. Now, this is a wave that everybody is... I, myself included, is starting to get really excited for because this is one that's bringing back Perceptor, it's bringing back Cup, and they've got their very G1 models, which, like I said in the introduction, I'm very much a G1 kind of guy. Now, uh, it looks really nice, and they're also pulling together some of the more obscure characters. They're bringing in Quake, and I believe the other one is Nox or something like that. Now, the one was Knox, I believe it was, was an old action master, never really had a transformed figure, but he looks really nice compared to what they, he was originally. Now, he's just a repaint of uh, whatever they called Skull Cruncher or Skull Crusher, whatever Hasbro ended up naming it. And same thing with Quake. Quake was originally a Target Master tank. He was one of the smaller Target Masters that came with two little figures, kind of like Scoop that we got a couple years ago. Um, so, Quake is coming back. Now he's coming back as a headmaster, but he's using Hard Head's remold. Me particularly, I like the coloring they did on him and everything like that. With the integration of the headmasters being able to be used in the weapon modes, uh, you can kind of, I guess, pull off a target master from him, but it is what it is. I mean, it's Hasbro, you know they're going to repaint everything. And to pick Quake for the repaint, I'm not going to complain too much about that. That was a decent pick. Um, now, the other ones that are coming out that are all brand new molds, Cup, uh, Perceptor, I can't remember who, oh, Topspin, is also in that wave. Now, those guys, obviously, we all know we're going to get the Twin Twist remold, slight remold, repaint from it, which... That one's fine with me. I loved those figures went before, and they were the blockiest, simplest Transformers you could find. Now they're actually getting what looks to be legitimate transformations and everything like that, and it looks amazing. So I'm very excited for that. Perceptor looks really nice, and Cup is just about a dead ringer for the original G1 Cup. The only problem I have with him is it seems like they're not painting his head. I'm hoping that's just going to stay as promotion picture with the gray head. I'm sure if anybody's seen it before, you might have that same concern because when we got the Generations Cup, he had this, the same colored blue head like the rest of Cup. That'd be my only gripe with it right now. I mean, in worst case scenario, I'll go to a hobby shop and paint it. Probably won't look great. I'm not the best painter, but I'll give it a try. The other big news I saw on Cybertron was that, and this is a couple days old at this point now, but they had Computron, their Computron, for only 50 bucks. Now, I know there's a lot of people that are probably on the fence about him because Japan came out with their version, and even in my opinion, the Japan version is far superior might not be everybody's opinion, but it is for 50 bucks to get a full combiner that was four deluxes, a Voyager, and a Legends class figure. It's unbeatable. So, Hasbro Toy Shop having that for 50 bucks, it's worth it. Now, the other news, interesting news I saw was from TFW 2005. Like I said in my introduction video, I get a lot of them from there. Um, and they had in-hand pictures of the current Wave 4. Now, they looked even better in the pictures. I like the way TFW does their pictures where they give you all the thumbnails and then they let you pick which ones you want to watch and they full screen it. Love that. And the, some of the pictures they had on there were absolutely gorgeous of the Wave 4 guys. And shows a lot of promise for these new figures. Titan's Return, in my opinion, has been phenomenal. I love that they brought the Headmasters back. And honestly, they 
yeah, they're going to repaint. We all know Hasbro's going to repaint. Takara's going to repaint. Just deal with it. If you like the repaints, get them. If you don't, hey, it's it's your choice, you know? I mean, everybody, a lot of people like to rag on Sentinel Prime because of how orange he is. Like, Emgo, he's hard on, on the orange on Sentinel. But we all knew Astro Train was coming from it. So if you don't like the orange, wait for Astro Train. You know, if you don't like Prime looking like an oil tanker from G2, wait for Octane to come out. He's, you know he's coming. Hasbro is not going to lose any opportunity to make money, so you know they're coming. Get the one that you like the best. Or if you like them all, like I do, eh, buy them all if you have the money. I would buy them all, but I don't have the money. So, And the other thing I saw in TFW that I really liked was they, and then believe it or not, it's from the Robots in Disguise series. Um, I'm not big on that, but this Combiner Force subline that they're making on the Robots in Disguise is actually turning out to be quite nice. Um, you know, they have the standard repaint of Starscream into Skywarp, which Skywarp was always my favorite anyway, so that interests me. But the thing that I saw on there that kind of really piqued my interest was the fact that they had um, Blur. Now we had just, as probably all of you know, we just got Blur in Titan's Return, and it was very faithful to G1 Blur. Now they've got the Combiner Force in Robots in Disguise coming out with Blur. It looks a little bit more like a younger robot, maybe, but that's what they're going for in that whole series. For my collection, probably not, but it definitely looks like a quality toy, and a lot of the stuff they've been coming out with this Combiner Force looks like real quality stuff, so it's definitely become a line of Caster's choice, I would call it. Like, if it's your taste, choose it. The, the wave is looking very promising. They, I hope they keep doing good things with it. Now, those are the most interesting things I could see coming out of those two. And obviously, I will link them in the bottom of the, in the description. Um, but always search around a little bit more on both websites. They're both great for any kind of Transformer information. I'm sure most of you know that. And like I said, I'm starting this channel because I just want to get feedback from you guys and people that enjoy this stuff like I do and have somebody to talk about with it. Because like I said, my girlfriend's like, oh, please stop talking to me about it. So I need somebody to talk to about it. Um, now, my recommended review and kind of been hinting around to who it would be coming from anyway, if you've been paying attention, is from MGO, and it is on a third-party figure, which is the uh, the Despotron that he just put up. I think he put it up yesterday. Um, this is now Saturday in New York. Um, so he put this up on Friday. Great review of the figure. Now, like I said, I like giving third-party their props because they do bring about changes for Hasbro, or seemingly they do bring changes from Hasbro and Takara. And this is a really reimagined Megatron. Very nicely done, though, as a double double barrel blaster. And MGO did a great review of it. Um, I tend to enjoy his more than anybody else's, just for a simple fact. He seems to have a little bit more fun with his reviews. And he does hit the things I like to see, which is size comparisons. Um, I do... Um, I, some of the other reviewers, I do like checking out their videos too, because they might re do like a size comparison to something that's more relational to something that you might have in your collection, so you can get an exact size, not necessarily something that's another third party or something within the same wave. It give you a, a better scale, so that's why it won't always be the same reviewer that I put out a uh, recommendation for, because everybody has their own dynamic and the way they do it. They have their perks to them. So, um, and the product I'm looking at right now, and it's something I saw on TF Source. Um, I'm not sure if Egg Bad Toy Store had it up yet or not. I'm sure they do. Pretty much all the online retailers get it at the same time. Is the Striker Nor? Now, if anybody has seen the Striker Manus, which is a third party, it's from that same line that the Despotron is from. Um, it is very nice looking. Very very flexible prime. 
the reason I'm liking it for my personal purchase is I was thinking about getting Striker Manus to add to my collection. But when they came out with Striker Nor and it was the Nemesis Prime version of him, I felt that was a little bit more fitting because I still love my uh, Generations Prime. The one that came back out in like 2006, I think it was, where he had the wind vane that turned into his gun. That's still my all-time favorite Prime so far. And the one thing is when Car, Car Robots or Robots in Disguise back in 2000 came out, uh, Scourge or Nemesis Prime, the first real showing of him, was not an exact duplicate of Optimus Prime. He looked different. He was the G2 compared to the Firetruck Optimus Prime, but they had the similarities where you could make that, uh, make that cohesion between the two. And that's why I like this Striker Nor, is against the Optimus Prime I have, or that, that Generations Prime that I had, putting Striker Nor next to him scales well, um, forgive me, I can never say his name right, but Peal, P-E-A-U-G-H, his reviews, he did comparison where you could see the size of Striker Manus, and he is very Voyager size, so he fits in well with the Voyagers, and then Striker Nor is just enough different so that you have that good Optimus Prime to Scourge or Nemesis Prime, whatever you want to call them, dynamic, where you can see they're both definitely cut from the same fabric, but they're different characters. So that's why I put him as my product uh, I'm interested in currently. So for episode one, I'm going to wrap it up there. I will have links to everything, including Striker Nor, the review in the description of the video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you come back for more on this, and I hope you seek out more information on these videos, and have a great day, guys.